this is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV and Association for MPK Global. Work in Gibraltar here for White Pavetkin 2. I'm joined by, again, British champion Ted Cheeseman. Spectacular knockout of JJ Metcalf tonight. And if anyone was doubting you about kind of where you are, your credentials, etc., you answered them tonight spectacularly. Yeah, I um, thought I performed unbelievable tonight. Um, I've got rid of all my demons. A long time recovering and I'm feeling the fresh and the best as I felt my whole career. Let's talk about the fight as a whole. At Metcalf, absolutely worthy opponent obviously to challenge you tonight, but how tough was he in there tonight, Ted? Uh, yeah, he's very tough. Do you know what I mean? I thought I was I had him out in the third or fourth round um, I had him really badly hurt and I thought I was gonna get him out of there. And obviously I put a lot into that round. So I felt I won the fifth and sixth as well. But seven, eight and nine I sort of took my foot off the gas having a bit of a break using my experience, knowing that in the championship rounds he hadn't really been there and been tough. Uh, I had to tough it out and I, that's what I'd done. I, I showed him what to do in the championship rounds and by doing that, using my experience, I put him out of there. Ted, we spoke only a couple of days ago about kind of where you were at the, that European level and then you making the decisions drop down and kind of put yourself back up. But you've had to do that. You've done what you had to do, but now it's that opportunity for you to get back to kind of that European fringe world level. Yeah, 100%. Um, listen, um, I, I, I've had my stumbling blocks, but uh, I showed everyone, if you knuckle down, if you, you try and be the best just, uh, best person you can be of yourself, put, like best version of yourself, I showed that I've come back and I've cemented myself back at number one at the domestic level. Still probably the youngest at, at, at the domestic level but with the best resume as well. Um, took tough fight after tough fight. I ain't had no easy fights for the last two or three years, maybe even longer. And I'm just feeling better and better. I'm improving all the time. I do feel generally you answer some questions tonight against someone who's been talked about for quite, well, the last two or three years in Metcalf as someone who was kind of possibly untested, but has huge potential. And this was being labeled as a 50-50 fight. So, Regardless of how you viewed it from the outside public, this was viewed as a 50-50 fight, but you answered every question that was answered to you. Yeah, 100%. Um, tonight when I was walking to the ring and um, in the changing room, uh, warming up, walking to the ring, I was confident. I had no pressure on myself. I believed in my ability. And it's from getting that win with Sam Egerton. When I had that, the bad, uh, bit of bad luck, I was getting in the ring with a lot of pressure on my back. And I didn't think anything was going my way. When I got that win against Sam Egerton, it rejuvenated my career and took the resentment away from boxing and made me still fall back in love with boxing. And I showed everyone how good I really am. How, 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 or proves all of that is wrong tonight. We know, obviously, as much as boxing is an individual sport in the ring, you can't do it with, without your team. I do want to bring your coach, Tony Sims, who's having a chat in a minute. Tony? Just come in a second, mate. Tony, I know, for one, you'll be absolutely ecstatic that Ted Cheeseman was, in his eyes, proved a lot of people wrong tonight and got a, a spectacular stoppage win. Yeah, I mean, we all, we've all discussed the problems that um, he's had in the past with his addiction problems. But, you know, he got clean from the addiction... Uh, the gambling addiction, you know, and uh, he's knuckled down, like like he said, like he's, he's give yourself the opportunity to produce a performance like this tonight by living the right way, you know, he, he's got a lovely uh, wife and baby, and you know, that's all he does and stays indoors, trains, goes back indoors, trains again, so, you know, the performance, he's improved, like he said, every single fight he's improved, he's improving in the gym all the time, he trains hard, like a demon he trains, and you know, and then, when you see him fight, you know, don't get me wrong, JJ Metcalf's a good fighter, don't worry about that, he can whack, you know, he's smart in there, he had a lovely jab, he's a good fighter, but, you know, uh, you know, Ted, at his age now, he, you know, he's still got a long way to go, he's still got a lot of improving to do, and he's got plenty of time to do it as well, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to his career, I mean, he can push on for me now. Ted, when I spoke to you in the week, you were quite understandably a reluctant to talk about anything apart from JJ Metcalf and I spoke to you about Fowler, etc. And you kind of said what I expected you to say that ask me ask me after after yeah. the fight because you're focused on Metcalf. But now you you've beaten Metcalf. 
the fight that keeps will get talked about for until you have it is the fight with Anthony Fowler. Is that a fight that you will next target? I'm not sure. It's, look, I always rushed. I always pushed for fights. Do you know what I mean? And um, so sometimes never made the right calculated decisions. And it's down from Tony and Charlie, my manager and my coach, to sort this stuff out and Eddie to sort this stuff out. And if they think it's right for me, you know me, look at my resume. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, whenever. So I always, as long as, as when the fight date tells me, I ask how much money, when. That's all, that's all I ask. I don't care who it is. What it is. If my coach and my manager believe they want me to fight them, I'm happy. It don't matter. I'll get ready and try and perform my best to beat them. I'll kind of swing this question over to you, Tony, because obviously he's answering how he should do, but you as his coach, we saw uh, Anthony Fowler recently with a good win. They were talking about Gar uh, Garcia fighting Anthony Fowler recently as well, but the fight with him and Ted, that does seem to make a little bit of sense right now. You said Anthony Fowler's a very, very good fighter, you know, and as Eddie was saying earlier in the interview, the domestic scene, the £154, he's a really good, you know, it's a really good really good level at the minute you know the, these fighters at this and you know, the British scene are really good fighters but you know the fight I'd really like Ted to have is a return with Scott Fitzgerald because obviously we know Fitzgerald beat Fowler and he's got a points decision over Ted which I thought on the night that Ted won that fight and I know Ted would like to get that you know revenge over Scott you know we're hearing Scott's back in the ring very soon so that that's the fight I'd really like Ted to do but obviously if the money's right, you know, sit down and speak to Eddie, then, you know, if the money's good, then, you know, and, and it's right for Ted's career, the right move for Ted's career, then, you know, we'll sit down and talk about it. Well, Eddie Hannah has confirmed that Scott Fitzgerald will return to a matchroom show very shortly. So is that something that plays on your mind that you want to kind of put right? Yeah, of course. Um, I'd love to avenge that defeat. As, as I said, I, I believe I won the fight, do you know what I mean? So obviously I've had a lot more time recovering. I'm a lot fresher and I'm a lot more improved. So it'd be a great fight for me to get that chance to avenge that defeat. But obviously, look, we've just got to see what, what happens. Obviously, there's loads of fights that can be made. I want to see what, what ranking I, I get now because last time I fought Egerton, he was fifth. Once I beat him, I took the eighth ranking. So, But usually you usually take their ranking. I think. But now I beat the number five again. I want to see where I am in the IBF. Do you know what I mean? I come in this sport to be a world champion. Do you know what I mean? Um, to try and achieve my goal of being a world champion. So, if my team and things is right and I get fights, what opportunity brings me closer to that to that my achieving that goal? That's what I want. Well, before any talk of uh, Fitzgerald or, or Fowler or whoever it may be next for you, obviously enjoy your win tonight, regaining the British title. Your teeth look amazing. Yeah, you know what. I want to shout out to Dr. Luke Foley. He, he, he loved this. <laughs> Dr. Luke Foley at Royal Wolf Dental. He loved this. He, um, so do his teeth do look fucking good. I was looking at them now. I was thinking, what? do you know what? They look great. Nigel ben, Nigel ben just messaged me and he went, tell Ted his teeth look amazing. Yeah. That's what he said. See, I'm even getting better looking in these other fights. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your win. Enjoy the British title again for you. And listen, whatever it is next for you, you've got a good team around you. You've got a fantastic coach that cares about you and Tony Sims behind you. So you're going to be all right. Yeah, thanks a lot. Tony, you Tony, you got anything else to say? Oh, I'm just so over the moon for him, you know, I'm over the moon with, you know, what he's done in the last couple of years, not just with boxing, but with his personal life, you know, he's, he, he, you know, he showed what a true, true man he is, you know what I mean, and he's, he's, the win tonight, he just like boosted his confidence so much, and I just think, really think he'll push on from here. Yeah. So shout out your boy Charlie Sims as well, who's yeah, much of a team as, a lot, yeah. uh, he's not here at yeah. the minute, otherwise I'd grab him in, but yeah. he's as much of your team as, as anyone is, so shout out to Charlie as well. Yeah. Lastly, um, thanks um, to all my sponsors, thanks to all my family for the support. Thanks for Tony Sims and Charlie Sims sticking by me when I've come through this injection, um, addiction. Thanks to Bryn for supporting me and helping me get through the rehab. And thanks to everyone who's stopped by me. And now I've proved all these doubters wrong. And now it's time to, to push on with my career. Hold on, he's just turned up here. Man, he don't want to he just turned up here, not for the camera. For someone who doesn't really have the us, camera. He told us Mark that Selps. tonight he's got to do the, the soul, the the soul camera, dancing. What's it called? The Northern Soul. The Northern Soul, the Northern soul, soul dancing. Soul. Frankie, Char Frank, Frankie Loveman Crocker, right, ton of dynamite. So, we'll shout out. Out. I can't. It's, un it's, un <laughs> it's under wraps till later on, back on the boat. I can only do it on wooden planks and a bit of talcum powder. <laughs>
Do you know what? From a, an outside perspective, we see guys like Tony Sims who don't care for the limelight and, and being in front of the camera. He gets the camera put in front of himself. You're the same, Mark. You don't do a lot of interviews, no. but when you guys as a team achieve what you did tonight, then you need to be proud of that. Thanks very much, Kogan. As you say, we've, you know, we're private people, we shun publicity, but we're here to do a job, and that's the prime objective, is to make sure he's in the best shape, Tony does that, and I look after any injuries during the fight. We've got I'll a good what, team, and tell you what, we're very, right. very proud. Cause I don't, you, like you say, I don't always chuck myself in front of the camera, but you said something to me at Christmas, do you remember what you said? Absolutely, I, I, said, yeah. to, I said to him, Tell him what I said. Tell him what I said. Go on. It was at Christmas. There was no fight going on. I randomly you, messaged you. You had a few beers, Coog. You drunk. He went, he said, uh, I think you're the best trainer in the country. If I, had a fight, if I had a boy, I'd put him with you. And I went to him, you've been on the boost, Coog, or what? You've never given him a compliment ever. And he went, no, I'm deadly sober. Didn't you? I was. I was absolutely. And I think that Tony, because he doesn't, isn't one of these trainers that kind of makes it about himself. I'm not digging any trainer out, I'm just no. being serious. No. Tony, sometimes you have to kind of pester him to do an interview. Yeah. But he speaks when he speaks, but I think he likes to keep himself behind the yeah. background as, as yourself, Mark, because he knows yeah. ultimately it's about the fighter. Yeah, absolutely. So, we don't beat the drum for us, we beat the drum for the fighters. They're the ones that put the proper hard work in. You know, the, the smile on Ted's face after the way in, the hard work's done. It's an old saying, but train hard, fight easy, and that's what all the lads do in Tony's gym. They're all consummate professional fighters. And I'll reconfirm what I said to you, Tony Sims, on a random day in December. I'll give you that few quid when I see I'll you. Give me that few quid. <laughs> listen, like I said to you, I've got a lot of time for you and your whole family. And listen, what you do in boxing, what you've done over the years with multiple people, not just Ted, he's underrated, regardless of how you see it. And I know you don't shine for the limelight, and you don't think, oh, I need to talk. I've pulled you in this interview. I know, yeah. I know, I, I know, I have. And Ted, you know, and Mark, you know that Tony isn't one of these people that does that. No. So, listen, as a team, congratulations on the win Thank tonight, you. and we'll push on and see where Ted goes from here. Yeah, appreciate that, mate. Thank Rise you. Rising to the top. That's where he's going. Rising to the top. Thank you very much. <laughs> the big cheese, team, the big cheese. Thank you.